my brothers and sisters. I wanted to do a quick video today on, on a topic called Alter Christus. Uh, that basically means in Latin, another Christ. Uh, I wanted to do a topic um, about this. I wanted to do a video about this because I feel that it's very important. Uh, there are so many Roman Catholics in this country that go to confession every single day or every single week, some go to daily mass, and believe that they can go to a priest and confess their sins to this priest because they've been taught and indoctrinated since childhood that this priest is an altar Christus. And if you want to look this up online, you can. It means an altar, another Christ. Remember, Jesus said uh, in Mark chapter 13, verse 6, and Matthew 24, verse 5, many shall come in my name claiming I am he. Well, what are, the, what are one of the offices of Christ? What is one of his, uh, his roles or his works for us? He not only pays for our sin, but he, he also forgives. When he forgave sin on earth, people accused him of blasphemy and said only God can forgive sin. Well, we know, of course, Jesus is God and he forgave sin. Yet these priests can absolve people of their sins. People go and confess their sins to these priests. Um, and I have some things that I want to read you here, but it's just food for thought. Um, uh, we are to go to no one else. Uh, there's one mediator. 1 Timothy 2.5 says there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There is one God and one mediator, the man Christ Jesus. So going to a, a human man, a human priest, uh, and confessing your sin um, is not going to save you, and it does not, it, it does not mean forgiveness for your sin. I said in another video uh, that if you sin against me, but you go to someone else to confess that sin, have you come to me to ask forgiveness or have you gone through someone else to ask forgiveness? It doesn't make sense. You go to the very person that you've sinned against. But Catholics are taught, from my understanding, that they cannot go directly to God, uh, that they have to go through the priests, the papacy, the saints, Mary, in order to have any kind of connection with God at all. They do not believe or understand, I should say, that uh, when the, the curtain was torn in the temple, that God did away with that dividing wall that separated us, that we have access through one spirit to the Father, the Holy Spirit. And when he comes to live in you, you have direct access to the one you have sinned against. Uh, the very fact that the scriptures tell us, again, in 1 Timothy 2.5, and you can look this up, we have one God and one mediator, Never did it say in the scriptures that we are to go to priests or to go to the Pope or go to man or a pastor and confess our sin. We are to go directly to God. David said in the Psalms to the Lord, against you and you alone, O Lord, have I sinned. Again, if someone wronged me but went to everyone else but me to confess their sin, what good is that? Shouldn't they come to me directly and say, uh, Angie, I'm sorry, I sinned against you and get forgiveness from the very one they sinned against? But what if people were telling them, you can't get to Angie directly. You have to go through her neighbors, her family, or other means in order uh, to have a connection with Angie. Well, that's ridiculous. People can come straight to me. Well, this is what God has offered when he forgives sin and places his spirit in you and you become born again. You now have direct access to God with one mediator, according to 1 Timothy 2.5. So this is not a matter of opinion. This is scripture. And what I feel called to do on this channel is to expose false doctrine uh, according to Ephesians 5.11 and bring it to light and then teach the truth from the word of God, uh, which never lies. Let every man be a liar and God the truth, the scripture says. I also wanted to uh, bring to your attention, uh, I know I've done this before in previous videos, the word anti can mean in place of or a substitute for. The very fact that the, uh, the Pope takes the title, the Holy Father, this title is reserved for God the Father alone. And remember, Jesus said, many will come in my name, claiming that I am he. And Jesus said he came in the name of his Father, which means he alone has the title, the Holy Father. And if you doubt that, backtrack to Isaiah 9, 6, which says one of Jesus' names would be the Holy Father, the mighty God, the everlasting what? the everlasting father. This is Jesus' title when he came in his father's name, the mighty God, the everlasting, singular, father. The very fact that the Pope takes the term the holy father, or that the priests that serve under him in the Catholic Church are called father, 
I believe this fulfills the prophecy of when Jesus said, many will come in my name and deceive many. Remember, we have one Christ, one mediator, one God, and that's the man Christ Jesus. You need to go directly to Jesus and confess your sins. Do not believe and be deceived that if you go to the Pope or you go to a priest in your church and confess your sin, that you're, you're good to go with God. This is, this is a complete deception. It's falsehood. And you will stand before God one day and he will say to you, depart from me. I never knew you. We need to go directly to the source, which is God, and confess our sin. Because he is the one who died for you. He is the one that justifies. It is not a man that can justify you. The scripture says, cursed is the one who trusts in man. What does it say now? Cursed is the one who trusts in man. We cannot look to man, no matter what title they have or what office they hold, and expect that they can deliver you from the wrath of God or forgive you of your sins. This is not biblical. But because the Bible is not offered in the Catholic Church and it's not taught, its people, precious people, are led astray and deceived by these doctrines. I also wanted to read you something from Pope Benedict that I found here. It was on a blog called www.catholicforum.com. That's www.catholicforum.com. And one of the posts on this forum says, uh, in general, the priest is an altar Christus, another Christ, defined very beautifully by the Holy Father at the start of this year of the priest. As an altar Christus, the priest is profoundly united to the word of the Father, who in becoming incarnate took the form of a servant. He became a servant. Uh, the priest is an altar Christus in the sense that his existence, configured to Christ ontologically, acquires an essentially relational character. And it goes on and on and on. So the very fact that Pope Benedict calls not only himself the Holy Father, but he calls um, uh, the priests that serve under him, uh, th this is a quote from Pope Benedict on June the 24th, 2009, where he says that the priests are an altar Christus. So this is uh, living proof for you that Pope Benedict himself preached this doctrine. Uh, I'm here to inform you um, that there is no such thing as another Christ. There's only one Christ. That's it. And Jesus said, unless you believe who I say I am, you will die in your sin. The scripture also says, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name given men under heaven by which we must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus, and this is in the scriptures. Simply taking communion or going to daily mass, and I did a video on uh, transubstantiation recently, uh, will not save you, uh, dear friend. You must go directly to Jesus, and I promise you, if you ask him for forgiveness for your sins and you confess your sin, Jesus said he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Simply going to a man, a priest, and confessing your sin will not cleanse you from all unrighteousness and does not forgive you of your sin. Again, this channel, I felt led of the Lord months ago, uh, was made in order to uh, bring about false, uh, expose false doctrine and preach the truth from the word of God. God's title is the Holy Father. Isaiah 9, 6 says, when God became flesh, who was Jesus, the Son, that his name would be the singular mighty God, the singular everlasting Father. And remember, Jesus said, many will come in my name, claiming that I am he. And one of the roles of Jesus is to forgive sin. But yet when he came forgiving sin on earth, people accused him of blasphemy. They wanted to stone him. They wanted to kill him for blasphemy because you, a mere man, they said, claim to be God. And who but God can forgive sin? Yet, do you hear the Pope or the priests that serve under him being accused of blasphemy? Mm -mm. Nope. This is one of these last day's deceptions that is so craftily put together by Satan to deceive the masses. So please, if you have ears to hear this message, uh, please pay attention. I pray that you will not shirk this video throw it off and say, oh, here's another Protestant bashing Catholics. I'm not here to do that. I'm here to present the scriptures to you and present the truth to you based on the word of God. This is not my opinion. This is not something that I was taught in a church building. This is directly out of the word of God that I quoted you. Now, which would you rather side with? The Pope, the priests, and the catechism or the word of God, which never changes? Only the word of God is infallible, not the Pope. He's a mere man. The scripture says all have fallen short of the glory of God and sinned. David in the Psalms said, against you, Lord, and you only have I sinned. 
So I hope this speaks to someone. I hope it gives you something to think about if this is new to you. Maybe you've been raised your whole life in the Catholic Church and you've never heard any differently than what you've been taught. Well, I hope that this gives you something to think about and something to pray over. Uh, but remember, Jesus said, another will come in his own name and him you will receive. Jesus came in his father's name and they rejected him. But isn't it interesting that the Pope of Rome can come being called by the entire secular world, no matter what religion that they are, the Holy Father, which is God's title, his name alone, and yet not be accused of blasphemy. Again, there's only one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, and that's in 1 Timothy 2.5. Mark 13.6 and Matthew 24.5 say, Many shall come in my name, claiming I am Christ. Read this for yourself. Matthew 24.5 and Mark 13.6. Many will come claiming I am Christ. The very fact that the Catholic Church, including Pope Benedict, and you can read this all over the internet, uh, call the priests that serve under him, including himself, an altar Christus, means that it's an altar Christ, or they are an altar or another Christ. And what did Jesus prophesy in Mark and in Matthew? Exactly what's taking place now. And Jesus said that they would deceive many. And Jesus cautioned us in the scriptures, take heed that no man deceives you. He said that, as a matter of fact, before he actually uh, gave... Um, uh, his admonition to us uh, or his warning to us that many would come in his name take care that no one deceives you for many will come in my name so the very fact that Jesus came in his father's name that he is the everlasting father according to Isaiah 9 6 uh, meant that he came in his father's name yet another can come in his name and no one accuses him of blasphemy but I wanted to bring this to your attention there is only one name given under heaven by which we must be saved. There's only one name that we can go to and ask for forgiveness, and that is Jesus Christ himself. He's the one who died for you. He's the one who made you, and he is the only one, the only name you can call on for forgiveness of your sin. Again, let me leave you with this thought. If someone wronged you and sinned against you, but they went to your spouse or went to your children or went to a neighbor or a friend or a sibling uh, and asked for forgiveness, you would, you would be wondering, wouldn't you, why didn't that person come and directly speak to me and ask for forgiveness? Uh, it's the same thing with God. He invites you to come directly to him. And to be born again is not a Protestant term or a charismatic term uh, or some fad statement that has been propagated amongst, you know, uh, during the years in, in the Protestant church. This is actually a statement that Jesus himself made that you, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Are you born again, dear Catholic friend? Have you asked Jesus to forgive you of your sins, gone directly to him? Have you asked him to come into you? As a matter of fact, being born again means you're born of God's own spirit, that his spirit will come to live in you, literally in you, and your body will become the literal temple of the Holy Spirit of God. This is what it means to be sealed with Christ, to be filled with the Spirit, and to be born again. And Jesus said, unless you are born again, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. Simply going to Mass every day, taking the Eucharist, or confessing your sins to man does not mean you're born again and that you're okay with God. This is just a word of warning, um, a word of admonition to those of you who this may be new to. But I speak it in love. The Lord says speak the truth in love, and that's what I'm trying to do with meekness and fear. Please don't take this as a Catholic bashing video. I simply want to present the truth and love to you. God bless you and thank you for listening today.